hey y'all i'm here so okay all of these shows that i'm gonna talk about right now <sighs> lord have mercy these are three shows that i've been watching but i just really haven't had the time to sit down and do an individual review just because number one i'm we'll go through it let's just get love and marriage huntsville the out the way i can not do this show it's I've, i wanted to review it this season but i cannot deal with tisha and marceau they piss me the hell off they are like frustrating to watch on tv like to the point to like some i haven't even watched a lot of the episodes this season i just been like clicking on a first episode like clicking on an episode i see it'll give me a recap and i'll be like oh, okay nothing that important happened i'll go to the next episode but these last two episodes i have watched and when i'm telling you first of all martel holt is just super fucking annoying first the holts in general because i'm not gonna leave melody out of it because melody has pissed me off this season to you the holts are fucking annoying but martel holt has been showing his ass this entire off season so i didn't really want to see him and deal with him and his lies and then like i said tisha and marcel are just so frustrating the only person i can truly deal with and i love is kimmy i don't even love kimmy and maurice because maurice pisses me off because he never has kimmy's back kimmy's my bitch and i don't like tiffany because you came on this show and you thought that you was going to try to like i don't know stir the pot or some shit didn't like that and destiny you ain't bother me so you, you ain't you ain't bother me that much so far this season what do I have to say? Because all of this is just my quick thoughts on these damn shows. Because I'm, 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 let me see something. Because I got little tidbits written down after this last episode I watched. Tisha and Marcel, y'all are terrible, terrible fucking owners as far as a restaurant is concerned. I have worked in a restaurant, a fast food restaurant before. My boyfriend has worked in restaurants the entire time we've been together all the way up into his recent job literally has only worked as a line cook in restaurants so i'm pretty fucking familiar with how this shit works my uncle literally was a general manager for four fucking different restaurants until he stopped doing that recently as well that both of their asses got out of the restaurant industry because the people like tisha and marceau and the way y'all run y'all damn business i am a little bit confused i'm just confused on why y'all would think that it's smart. First of all, let me say this. I could tell, a couple things I could tell why y'all not running y'all business right. Number one, there is no reason that as a general manager, Jalen should be cooking, serving, any of that. As the general manager, what you're supposed to really be doing is just keeping an eye on everything and making sure that everything is running correctly. You go in the back, you do your little motherfucking paperwork, make sure that the numbers is hitting correct, make sure you got the right staff and stuff. Now, not to say GMs don't hop on the line. They do, but they hop on the line when needed. They help out servers when needed. They pop in and out, they do their little table touches and go about their day. It is not their shift that they come in and now they're on grill it's not their shift and now they're a server it's not their shift and now they're a bartender that's what you hire people for so that's number one how i could already tell that y'all not running this business there's no reason that jayla is a general manager and he is cooking more than he is managing that's a problem number one number two the fact that your entire staff walked out on y'all on memorial day it wasn't memorial day weekend or whatever the fuck a holiday weekend was that shit was planned and that shit was on purpose from the employees because they definitely got together and said marceau and tisha ain't shit they got this boy here running this store who obviously doesn't really know what it is that he's doing seeing how they want to be on tv showing their ass and acting a fool and acting like they running this restaurant when they really not we're gonna show their asses so on the most busiest weekend guess what we're all just gonna walk out and it's gonna be fucked them people don't do that just to do it they do when they have terrible freaking management and terrible ownership across the board that's when people do that so that lets me know that and then for y'all to come in and have that whole conversation with Jalen and then when Tisha brings up oh well you know we still don't really have a staff for Marcel to turn around and say oh well Jalen got it Jalen if I was you I would have quit right there on the spot like let's stop acting like because they keep saying in their confessions like, oh, he's getting good good experience and he doesn't even understand it. Was it nice of y'all to make this little boy, you know, and I, I don't want to say little boy because he's a grown ass man. He's actually probably not that much younger than me. He's probably like three, four years younger than me. But the point of the matter is, it's ridiculous for y'all to be like, for y'all to pretty much 
get this restaurant, put it in this young man's hand who's obviously, he said from the beginning, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to need help. I've never ran a, a store before. Like what said, like Tisha said, which I do agree with Tisha, you should have brought in an experienced general manager, put Jalen underneath that general manager because honestly and truly really Jalen should have been a shift supervisor until he was able to learn all of the ropes of everything and then become a general manager that's how it should have been he should have learned how to run a shift not the whole damn restaurant slowly but surely learn how to run a shift shift supervisor and then as time goes on then he could have gone well but y'all obviously do not care and when y'all restaurant is closed and i guarantee if it keep going this way y'all restaurant will be closed very fast because most restaurants they do not make a lot of money well new restaurants a restaurant is the hardest business to open because the majority of them fail and we'll just see where y'all at but so far terrible terrible fucking management what else we on to Tisha and her damn mama, Miss Wanda. Miss Wanda, I'm, I'm, I'm so tired of Miss Wanda. Miss Wanda don't got no damn business. I'm tired of her. And to be quite honest, you're talking about, oh, well, I know Kimmy didn't cuss out my mom. And in reality, bitch, Tisha, your mom needs to get cursed out. Miss Wanda needs to be cursed out and she needs to be put in her place because... I'm going to tell you right now, I know so many people who had this relationship with their mom and it's so annoying because it's like, so you won't put her in her place, right? But when I do, it's going to be a problem. So a lot of times when people be having, when I have friends that got moms and stuff like this, it's moms and stuff like that, it's this simple. Either you put her in her place or I will. Point blank period. Because at the end of the day, girl, that's your mama. That's not my mama. That's not my grandmama. That's not my great aunt. And that ain't nothing. That is just your mother. But that, and I will be respectful because she's older, but you're not going to talk to me crazy. And again, I stand by this when I say this all the time. Just because one person is okay with how you treat them or talk to them or whatever, that doesn't mean that you can go out in the world and everybody else is going to be okay with that. So, Tisha, just because Wanda talks crazy to you and you and your husband and stuff like that and nothing is said by you, that doesn't mean that anybody else is going to let that shit fly. And just because Wanda, Tisha don't say shit and she sat up there and she hold her mouth and don't say anything to you, that don't mean that nobody else is, will. Tisha, your mama deserved to get cursed the fuck out. Point blank, period. And more than anything, Tisha, what really makes me mad, I don't want to say what makes me mad. The most frustrating part about Tisha in particular, Tisha is so insecure. It is like so obvious. And I'm not trying to say that she doesn't have a reason because in all reality, we all know that Marceau ain't shit. 10 times out of 10, Marceau is cheating on Tisha. And if he is not, he has cheated on her. Point blank, period. And your insecurity, it's not even, I don't even know. It's not the insecurity part. It feels to me like Tisha is begging without actually doing it it feels like tisha is begging for us as the audience to believe that her husband is a good husband and it also feels like on the other hand she is begging for marceau to pay attention to her to love her to give two fucks about her that's what it gives me very much so it's very much so like even with the whole scene about when she was getting dressed and stuff like that uh in a bathroom let me tell you something got to and I've and they've been together 10 15 years I've been with my boyfriend 10 years at this point so you know I understand time being put into a relationship and stuff like that let me say something right now let me because we're actually in this this trip actually like got me super excited because next year for my friend's birthday I mean my aunt's birthday we all going to Vegas so it's going to be a trip like this so I was like super excited when we go to Vegas first of all we ain't even got to go visit if I go into the bathroom right now now and I start taking off my clothes. And he's walking by, it's a wrap. Whatever clothes I had on, it's a wrap. And if I am actually asking him to come in with me, because half the time, I'm Kimmy. No, stay your ass out there because it's going to take me longer if you come in here and start messing with me. If I ask him to come in, this nigga will literally knock the dog the fuck out the way. That's what I'm talking about. I don't have to beg my nigga to want to spend time with me, to find me attractive, to want... I don't have to do all of that. And it comes off very much so like Tisha be begging Marceau, begging Marceau to just do what the fuck it is that he needs to do as a husband. And I ain't got time for it. It's very annoying. Melanie... Me Melody, love you, all of that stuff, girl. But as far as Destiny and this whole situation, girl, you're full of shit. And that conversation that they had at Destiny's house, like, not this episode, a couple episodes ago, when Destiny had asked Melody to come over to her house after that little brunch that they had and stuff, I would have honestly smacked the shit out of Melody. Because, like Destiny said, are we children? 
it does come off i do not believe that melody knew that tiffany was gonna bring that stale tea but i do believe that melody knew that tiffany coming on this show it was about to be really messy and tiffany was gonna be messy point blank period you can't tell me no fucking different i don't really care what nobody say but now that the whole situation is over i want destiny to let it go i want her to lig i want her to lig but let's go back to tiffany because we just gonna end on her and then we're gonna be done with the whole love and mary tensville thing tiffany you really tried to come on this show and i see what you tried to do you tried to come on the show and, you know, shake the table or that's going, you know, mix it up a little bit. But you came in wrong. You do not come to somebody's birthday that you do not know and drop some shit like that on them. You have no idea. That shit was done on purpose. I'm sorry. That shit was done on purpose by Tiffany to get a reaction and to get some little camera time. Wasn't cute. Did not like that. Also didn't like the fact how you sat up there and tried to bring up the whole thing with Monster. And I love the fact that kimmy maurice and um kiowa which well, shout out to kiowa because y'all know she pissed me off last season but we good now kiowa came over there and got you together real quick fast in a hurry and then tiffany tried to use her biracial tears to cry and try to make everybody feel bad and then again melody you get on my nerves you coming over be like oh well she didn't mean to like that bitch mind your business first of all i didn't even like the fact that melody came over melody literally came over sat down and said oh it seemed like y'all having a serious conversation so then why would you continuously sit there if it looks like people are in the middle of a serious conversation and that's about somebody's kid you might want to walk away because you really you do have something to do with it in the fact that you brought tiffany in but you don't have anything to do with it because you didn't say anything so for you to come in the middle of a conversation that had absolutely nothing Nothing to do with you was a, actually a serious topic and then for you to come in and coddle this woman in her biracial tears to make the rest of us feel some type of way i don't know if the girl's biracial i'm you know i'm just saying but her her light skin tears and to try to come over and try to coddle her don't nobody got time for that tiffany you said what you said you was trying to be shady point blank period and your ass got ate up because you didn't think nobody would come and check you on a side note to that I seen the itty bitty scene where her, where Tiffany and her husband was talking about it later. Oh, I don't like the way Maurice came at me. How did he come at you? He came at you actually very respectfully. Unlike a whole, because let me tell you something, Tiffany. You would have came for anybody else's kid. It wouldn't have been that respectful. I'm going to tell you right now. They would have gathered you up real quick, fast, and hurt. Where am I at? I spent 12 minutes on this damn show. Over it. Y'all know how I feel about that. Let's move on. Don't worry. I'll time step it for y'all. Real Housewives of Potomac. The Real Housewives of Potomac, somebody did ask me to review it this season, but I haven't because to be quite honest, if I did, it would be like 0.5 second reviews. And I do not, if I'm going to give y'all a review, I don't want to come on here and only do it for two minutes. That's why I didn't review the last like two episodes of Real Housewives of New York because I didn't get anything from it. I don't even know if we'll get a reunion. I heard a reunion hasn't even happened yet for Real Housewives of New York, so I'm just a little lost about that. Um... But yeah, let me see. Where am I at? I'm tired of the Giselle and Karen fighting storyline. It's old. It's tired. It's played. And as far as I'm concerned, Giselle and Karen are both, are both very fraudulent fucking people. I know people go out for the grand dom. And I'll say out of everybody on this show, she might annoy me the least. I think. She's, She's at the tail end of people that annoy me the least. However, she is messy and she's just as shady and she's just as unnecessary as Giselle. Maybe not as much, but they not that much different. I know a lot of people love to ride on Karen's side because they hate Giselle. But to me, Karen ain't that much better than Giselle. She's just as shady. And especially to me after last season, she proved to me that she's just as shady, just as fraudulent as Giselle is. Both of them are fucking old and they're tired. And I'm fucking tired of the whole thing. I'm tired. Either be friends or don't. But y'all trying to do this whole frenemies thing the whole way that like, the same way, put it like this, the same way that we got tired of Nini and Kenya and how we are tired of Kenya and Portia, we're tired of the Giselle and and Karen thing we're over it we don't want to hear about it no more like I, I, don't, I don't I don't care anymore y'all bitches are friends like let's just be real y'all are really friends y'all are y'all are friends that's why y'all been cool for so long y'all are really friends y'all just like to do the little digs at each other and then get mad at each other for doing it y'all both take digs at each other what else 
Ashley Darby is still on my screen with Michael Darby and I am a little bit confused as to why. Now let me make something clear. I'm one of those people who did not, I was not on Monique's side last season when she grabbed Candace up. I was not on her side, not at all, but that's because I'm a little bit more mature than probably the average person and understand that you are supposed to use your words, not your hands, especially when you are on a show like The Real Housewives, people are going to talk shit. If you're going to go and grab somebody every time that they talk shit or get loud, and da, da 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 and all of this is going on. Then you might as well fight everybody. All of that to say, Monique was pretty much kicked off this show, or y'all tried to kick her off the show for grabbing Candace up. I am still confused as to this, why to this day, Michael Darby is still allowed to be on The Real Housewives of Potomac. It makes no sense to me. How is it that your own staff, Bravo, your own staff has come to you and told you that this white man has assaulted them or made them feel uncomfortable and y'all just said well fuck how the crew feels fuck how the staff feels he and his weird ass wife they're both so fucking weird and and drama filled that we need them here that's what y'all do i don't give to any time ashley darby comes up on my screen i fast forward because i don't have time for her shenanigans and while i'm here i want to bring this up because it's been i have not really been watching the real housewives of potomac this season i've been catching up like late so now i'm caught up with pretty much all the episodes but i have been seeing that all of y'all online keep going in on candace and not to say that candace this is not annoying because lord knows she's annoying and if she where's that damn thing at where where's the where's the th this is my ivy park bro y'all if she go like this one more time fold it up fold it up fold it up if she one more time i'm a fucking scream right but when this whole situation just happened, I think the last episode where Candace like had called Ashley like big body or something like that, and now everybody went jump. Okay, oh you body shaming. Let me. It, it's like, and again, I and again, I'm gonna say this so much. I think that people's hate for Candace, and this happens a lot of times on reality shows. Y'all hate for one person will literally trump the way that y'all look at the person coming for them, and that's not fair. Ashley Darby has been. A freaking, and I don't even want to say this word because I'm on YouTube. <sighs> That's what I'm going to say. Ashley Darby has been terrorizing, there we go, people, women on this show since she's gotten here. And this whore thinks, and not even thinks, but it has worked. I don't know why y'all are not paying attention. Ever since Ashley Darby has had a baby, she has some way, somehow, all of a sudden, it's like a whole rebrand. Now all of a sudden, Ashley is no longer held accountable. And I'm talking about from what I see online. It seems to me like Ashley's never held accountable for shit since she's become a fucking mom. Now that she's a mom, can't nobody say anything to her. Can't nobody read her. Can't nobody do anything because now Ashley Ashley's a mom and I'm fucking tired of it because when Ashley was not a mom all she was doing was going around and terrorizing the hell out of everybody now that her ass is getting it back because she does not know how to read and because Ashley does not have comebacks the first thing she want to do is say is you're body shaming me no bitch I'm just fucking reading you point it ain't got nothing to do with whether or not you a mom or nothing like that bitch I'm reading you and it's just that simple and all Ashley has done this season in particular is go around and stir the pot and not only stir the pot but literally being Giselle's little minion running around stirring pots for her then like uh Candace said going to get her breast milk and bounce that's exactly what she did but now everybody want to come up and defend Ashley and call Candace outside of her name Ashley Darby has gotten away with so much shit her and her weird weak ass fucking husband and her arranged ass marriage so that she has somewhere to live with her fucking children I'm tired of the defense of Ashley Darby there is no more defense I do not want to hear it her and specifically her husband are trifling and the fact that Bravo Andy allows Michael Darby to still be on this show after all of the allegations 
from Bravo staff against him that he's still allowed to be on this show says enough to me as far as white privilege is concerned. And I'm fucking tired of it. Moving the hell on. What else do I have? Giselle, you are trifling again as why are you always coming for somebody's husband in their marriage? You did it with Monique and that's really why I was mad at Monique last season is because you took all that anger out on the wrong person. Instead of taking that shit out on Candace, you needed to take that shit out on Giselle. Giselle was really the one who deserved to be dragged across that table by her hair. Giselle is the one who really deserved to get all of the smoke that you gave. That's why I and a lot of people were mad last season because Giselle is really the one who's going around spreading that false rumor about your husband and your son. Same way, this season she's doing the same thing with Wendy, but putting it under the guise of, because this is how she's trying to cover herself. This season she's covering herself by saying, well, I didn't believe it. Well, I, didn't, I don't care, girl. You still walking around and you running your mouth and you talking about it to this person, this person, this person, this person, this person. And I don't like how if anybody was being body shamed so far this season, it's Wendy because she got her boobs done and her ass done. Now she doesn't have substance. If anybody is being body shamed, it's Wendy. Let's move the fuck on because that shit really pissing me off. And then finally, marriage at first sight. I'm going to just go through the couples, y'all. And I'm going to tell y'all what I think about each couple, whether or not I think they'll make it. But And I did not watch yesterday's episode just as a prelude. Bayo, is it Bayo and Johnny? Now, I know that they knew each other and stuff like that. Now, at first, they seemed really, really cool. They seemed like they was going to really get along. But after that last episode I watched, when he said he was going to get his stuff and leave, absolutely not, Mr. Johnny Blaze. Absolutely not, Mr. Johnny Blaze. When you are in a marriage like uh, Bayo said, or, oh, no, wait, wait, which one is Bayo and which one is Johnny? Whichever. When the husband got up and left, like the wife said, you don't do that when you're in a marriage. You do not pick up and leave just because, oh, well, da -da -da, I need a couple days. You should have never got married at first sight if you felt like you was going to need a couple days. That's that on that. Wait, me, me. Marilla and Gil. Marilla gets on my damn nerves. Um, She's super high maintenance. She's very annoying. Gil is better than me because I would have been got my stuff and left. This is too, this bitch is too high maintenance and she's too materialistic for my liking gil is really out here trying to be a good man trying to give her her space you know not trying to be intimate her trying to give her her own space and stuff but she's doing team too much and i do not like her next michaela and zach i haven't now see i gotta watch this new episode because see the last episodes i watched they haven't really interacted because you know he was sick and stuff so but i do like michaela i think she's like adorable i think zach is fine as hell Brett, which one is Brett and Ryan? Oh, okay, I know. Wait, no, is that Brett and Ryan? Hold on, is Brett and Ryan, is that the, uh, the redhead, I believe? I think that is Brett and Ryan. Brett and Ryan, they seem like they, it's okay, but it feels like they're gonna have a lot of, I don't know why, if I see dysfunction in their future. Just because the way Brett is and the way Ryan is, I don't know, I just feel like they're gonna come, they're gonna come back. And I, I can't give y'all the feeling as to why, but I feel like that's gonna hit the, you know, that's gonna end up hitting the, uh, the fan. And then we do Rachel and Jose. Um... So I think they're they're okay. Like you know, they're, they're they're getting to it. The only thing I really have out here is Rachel likes her independence. So she said, and this is one episode she was like, she likes her independence. So she doesn't really like how Jose is very like, I want to be the man of the house. I want to take care of this. I want to take care of that. And Rachel was like, well, no, nigga, like don't 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 do that. Like I got it. And it's kind of hard. I would imagine when you've been single for so long and stuff like that. And you know, you gotta do that. Uh, let me see. 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 Let me see this is all the notes i have here is not from like the last two episodes it's like when they were still on vacation so let me see here's anything i got i don't like how marilla and i don't know if they kissed at this point but i didn't like how uh what, what is her marilla marilla whatever the hell her name is her and gail i don't like how she was making a big deal about kissing like i don't even kiss people until my second or third date y'all have to stop coming on married at first sight and saying that this is not a date you decided to skip that whole process and just get married. So to be like, well, I'm just not going to kiss him. Well, bitch, you married to him. So I'm a little bit confused. Where do your standards and where do your, your morals and all of that stuff go when you just married this man you did not know? So it, it always confuses me. People are like, I mean, but I still don't know him. He's still a stranger. If you feel like that, why the hell would you get married? It's just dumb. 
<sighs> all I did was complain this whole damn video. I'm sorry, y'all. That's all I did. But those are the three shows that I've been looking at. Um, if they don't irk me enough, I will try to do individual episodes. But I, I can't promise y'all nothing. At the most, I'm gonna be real. I might come back and just do it like this. Cause unless like something in particular like really happened on one of these episodes, I'm probably just gonna come back and do it to y'all like this. Cause I do want to talk about the shows, but I don't feel like giving a whole video dedicated to each one because each one married at first sight is two hours too long i've been saying that since i've reviewed it the first time and i don't got time for that shit like i'm tired i'm black i gotta work i don't got time for that shit i don't want to do this shit all day but y'all gonna comment y'all tell me what y'all think like i said i'll make sure that there's time markers for all of the um shows i'm out y'all bye